like three key daily habits that you that sort of helps set your day and helps you in the right mindset to succeed? Um, I'm not sure. My life is not structured in that mm -hmm. way. Um, I mean, the first thing is I've got to figure out what city I'm waking up in. <laughs> um, yeah. We still live in we live in different places, and in different places, I have different I have different habits. Uh, work is a big part of my life, but so mm. is my family. Um, and uh, so we, we now have the freedom to do a lot of things um, that we weren't able to do as we were building the business. So I think it's we put a lot of effort into enjoying the uh, results mm. of what we've accomplished, but also giving back. Uh, we're very involved in community and philanthropically, mm. and that's it's a very big part of our life, not just writing checks, but getting very involved in helping our community organizations accomplish their goals because we've de developed a lot of skills mm. over the years which we think we can bring to the uh, not-for-profit world and in fact which we're actively doing. How are you doing that? Just curious because you were involved with the Federation and the leadership. I think that was a great program. Yeah, so in so I'd been very active in the Jewish community in Los Angeles mm. for many years, probably 25 plus years, including wow. being on the board of the Jewish Federation, the Jewish Community Foundation, the board of my temple. Mm. And um, so my uh, involvement in the not-for-profit world has always been as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as what I'd call a philanthropic entrepreneur. Mm. So really not accepting the status quo, but trying to figure out how to build programs or initiatives mm. that best met the needs of the time that we were living in. So, yeah. um, and I'm fortunate because I had really great pro partners in the not-for-profit non world and mm. we were able to create some really phenomenal programs that have been able to sustain themselves uh, even beyond my involvement. Mm. Uh, in Park City, we have focused all, most of our efforts on the, uh, on the immigrant uh, population here, which is a, uh, a community that I am very sensitive to, particularly the plight of those immigrants who were not able to access public services, right. and uh, particularly in the area of early childhood education, which I've learned uh, in this community is the single biggest need that, um, that much of the immigrant population has. Mm -hmm. So we're in a service economy here mm -hmm. uh, where many uh, parents or uh, have multiple jobs or both parents certainly have a job and mm -hmm. they need to be able to get their children into the educational system but most of them can't afford to right. because there's no uh, public uh, public educational system for kids aged zero to five so for them a lot of it becomes informal so what we focused on here is uh, providing the capacity to fill the need of the community so our goal is to ensure that any uh, any pre-k kid has access to early childhood education because we've seen the consequence of that as kids move through the educational system and really mm -hmm. never catch up many of them never catch up from their lack of access to uh, you know, ESL skills or social skills that are, that are developed in those pre-k years that's touching I mean that's uh takes a lot of heart uh yeah that's great I've seen personally that you've I mean you created a program that I was a part of that uh that really does open your eyes and expose you to things that you know I, I still feel very fortunate and I still bet you know get the benefits from the program that I went through so thank you so my focus is always on leverage mm -hmm. it's really in the same way that we use leverage in real estate mm -hmm. to acquire projects on a much of a much larger scale than we otherwise could i look to utilize that in the not-for-profit world and that's re really leveraging the resources of not-for-profit organizations uh, either their capital resources or their expertise or personnel to create programs that can have an impact significantly mm -hmm. beyond what i could do myself um, so i was very focused 10 or 12 years ago on the on the development of leadership in the not-for-profit world and the ability to mm -hmm. leverage resources to create leadership programs that would enable people to become better qualified leaders in the not-for-profit world while receiving concurrently a very personal value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've always been of the opinion that people have lots of choices as to 
what they do with their time or their money. And if you can create the best option for them, that is the one they're going to pick. So they're going to look at the value proposition. Yeah. And uh, But the community benefit is great. Yeah, uh, The networks that are created, the organizations that end up with young board members and chairs mm -hmm. and et cetera. Um, so the, the benefits can be significant over time. But it has to be impactful, it has to be sustainable, and it has to deliver value. Interesting. Well, that's, uh, that's all my questions. I really appreciate you meeting with me and having this discussion and just in general, you've always been an inspiration to me, so thank you. Well, thanks very much. I really appreciate you coming all the way over how to do this. Oh, my pleasure. It doesn't feel like it's been too painful for you either. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I'm going to be back here a lot. Great. So. Well, we love this place and tell people to come visit. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Come meet us over at signetinvestments.com. There you'll have access to our full podcast and articles archives. Thank you and invest wisely.